Chapter 16 of the show can by Frederick Chandler's Wings. Dr. Boland spread marmalade on her toast and had a sip of orange juice. She looked out the window at the ceramic cat which had been positioned so as to appear to be climbing the tree. When Dr. Boland was finished with her toast and orange juice, she rinsed the glass, put it in the sink, and threw the napkin away. She took the piece of paper with the directions on it, read it, and put it in her purse. She went to the porch door and made sure it was locked. She went to the closet and took a sweater off a hanger. She put it on. She took her hat from the little stand by the telephone. She took her white gloves from the drawer which had held the address book and put them on. She glanced down the hallway toward the kitchen, looked at the living room and walked to the front door. She opened it and stepped into the vestibule. She looked at the umbrella stand. She considered and then took her umbrella. After closing the front door, she opened the very front door. On the stoop, she opened the little metal mailbox by the door. It was empty. She shut the door, put the key in the lock, turned it, tested the handle, put the key in her purse, closed her purse, and walked down the steps. She walked along the sidewalk and then up her driveway. She unlocked the garage, pulled the door upward, and then pushed it further up. She got into her car, started it, backed out of the garage, stopped the car, put it in neutral, and put on the emergency brake, got out, pulled the garage door down, locked it, got back in her car, and drove to Kate's. When she pulled up, she saw a white-gloved hand part a lace curtain in a second-story window, as it always did. Good morning, Lucy, said Kate, when she got in the car. Good morning, Kate. Now I'm just going to stop at Mr. Benson's and have the oil checked. Are you getting gas, too? Dr. Boland pulled out. No, it's almost full. You don't want to run out of gas, you know. Oh, I know, but it was full yesterday afternoon. But you know, I think I'll get the tires checked. Oh, are they low? Well, I don't think so, but driving into the mountains, you know. Yes, you need air in the tires on gravel roads. Oh, I know. Oh, yes. You remember Bob Finchenhurst. Finchenhurst. Wasn't it Finchenhorn? I don't think so. I don't remember him. I don't think I remember him. Of course you do. He was married to Mamie Finchenhurst. Who was she before? Gwendolyn Punker's daughter. Mamie Punker married Bob Finchenhorn? Well, the Bob and Mamie I knew were Bob and Mamie Finchenhurst. I don't remember them. Well, his tires were low in the Poconos. What? In the Poconos. I thought you said low in the Poconos. I did say low in the Poconos. What's that describe? What's what describe? Low in the Poconos. I don't know an expression of low in the Poconos. In the Poconos, which is a range of mountains, Bob Finchenhurst had low tires. How do you come to know he had low tires? Mr. Benson told me. Mr. Benson told you Bob Finchenhorn had low tires? Yes. Well, why would he tell you that? Because Bob Finchenhurst, whose name is Bob Finchenhurst and not Bob Finchenhorn, hit a rock and the front tire burst and he was stuck all day. Oh. If he'd had full tires in the f if he'd had full tires, the front tire might not have burst. Is it true that low tires are more likely to explode than full tires? Yes, I think so. Dr. Boland pulled into the gas station. Hello, Dr. Boland, said Mr. Benson. Check your tires? 